Good morning, dear friends and family in Christ. What a privilege to be able to sit around God's Word this morning. And I want to speak to you about the blessing of God's presence. Now, the greatest secret to success in this life is God's presence. We've seen this over and over for the past nine weeks while busy uh, with our mid during our, our midweek uh, Bible study, while busy with the life of Joseph. And we saw how that Joseph was slave, was sold as a slave, but still God's, God's presence in his life made him prosper. And he got promoted to the second highest position in Egypt. If you and I as children of God want to live in victory, we must make sure that we do not lose the presence of God. In Exodus 33, verse 13 to 15, we read Moses is busy in a conversation with God. And it says, Now therefore I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way, that I may know you, and that I may find grace in your sight, and consider that this nation is your people. And God said, My presence will go with you. I will give you rest. Then he said to God, If your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. God speaks to Moses and he says that he's going to leave the people because the people are rebellious. They must move on without God. But Moses is very worried and he pleads with God that God will not leave them. That God's presence will remain with him. And Moses does not ask for miracles and signs and and stuff. No, he only seeks God's presence because he knows the importance of God's presence. I will ask you this morning when you pray, when we pray, what do you ask for? What do we ask for the most? Is it money? Is it stuff? Is it comfort? Is it health? Or is it God's presence? Many Christians are completely ignorant about the presence of God. Many pastors know nothing about the power of the presence. But having the presence of God with us is more worth than wealth or fame or anything this world can offer. You see, I'm not scared when I go to bed at night. I'm not afraid of tomorrow. I'm not afraid of the unknown. I'm not afraid of getting old. I'm not afraid of next year because God's presence is part and parcel of my life. Romans 8.35 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Or sword? You see, a slave pole in Egypt could not separate Joseph from God's presence. A fiery furnace could not separate Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego from God's presence. The lion's den could not shut Daniel from God's presence. When I'm in God's presence, I can be at rest like a baby against his mother's breast. And the mother's presence doesn't prevent storms and noise and stuff that scares babies. But the mother's presence provides a place of safety. God's presence offers me rest and peace. Without God, life is frustrating. Life is filled with attacks from demons. It's discouraging, full of fear, sickness, sin, suicide, distress, and the list carries on. I want to ask you, is God still present in your life? And this question is very easy to answer. Who or what is your priority source in this life? Is your source money, possessions, friends, or is it God? Psalm 51, 11, David is praying. He says, do not cast me away from your presence, O Lord, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. What a powerful prayer. You see, David is caught in adultery between, uh, with, with, with Bathsheba. And God want to punish him. And he prays earnestly to God. And he has only one request. Lord, do with me what you will. Take what you want, but please do not remove your presence from me. Because you know the importance, he knew the importance of God's presence. Lord, take everything, but do not remove me 
I can remove Cain, uh, removed Cain from your presence. We read in Genesis 4 that, that Cain, Cain uh, murdered his brother Abel. And God drove him out of his presence. And he told Cain, you will be a wanderer and I will not be with you. Then in Genesis 4, 4 verse 13, we read, And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Even Cain knew what the privilege was of God's presence. Moses experienced the problem of the problem with Israel. That he had one assurance. God said he would not leave, he would not remove his face from Moses. That he would go with him and give them rest. You see, my friend, it's dangerous not to live in the presence of God. Why? Because 1 Peter 5 verse 1 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Now he cannot devour all. He walks around seeking whom he can devour. It's those who are without the presence of God. Those lost sheep who are wandering around doing their own thing apart from the shepherd. You see, when things go wrong in our lives, we so often blame others. Oh, it's the politicians, it's the whites, it's the blacks. No, no, no. It's not a white and black and politician thing. It has all to do with the presence of God in our lives. I'll come back to that now. Let's take a quick look. Where did Pentecost the church, the Pentecostal church originate. What is it, its roots? It started at Pentecost. Not Martin Luther or Calvin or the Reformation. No, Pentecost. We believe as a Pentecostal church in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We believe in repentance and baptism by immersion. We believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, including speaking in tongues, prophecy, powers, and works of God. But what happened at Pentecost? God himself came to dwell in his children through the Holy Spirit. That is why his name is Emmanuel. God is with us. God's presence is in and with us. Do we experience him every day? If not, it's not because God has forsaken us, but because we have no more time for God. It's because we have other idols. Maurice, idols, I don't serve. No, I don't bow, bow for any idols. No, come and tell me. What thing in your life take, uh, takes up the most time? With what activity do you spend the most time during your 24-hour day? What, what's in your mind? What goes on in your heart most of the time? Only you know. You know your priorities. And if God is not the number one thing in your life, or no, forget about the number, because if God is not the primary thing in your life, then, and something else is primary, then it's an idol. Sport became an idol. Making money became an idol. There are a lot of things in our lives that's more important than, than God. If you're not in church on a Sunday morning, busy worshiping God together with your fellow, your fellow saints, what are you busy with? If that which you are busy with is more important than God, it's an idol. See, the things in our country that, that, that are wrong is nobody's fault but our own. There was a time when South Africans were poor and oppressed by England. But children of the Lord began to see God and revival broke out from 1980, uh, 1860 to 1920. It happened in various places in the country. It started in, 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 in the uh, in Mpumalanga and, and the, the northern Transvaal in the South Pansberg and, and it, it went over KwaZulu Natal, Kwaziza Bantu, uh, in the Transkei, Queens, uh, Queensburg, that, uh, Queenstown, uh, all over that, those places, uh, Montaki, uh, Worcester, uh, Kalfinia and the Karoo, um, 
came down, Douglas, Marydale, all over. God poured out His Spirit. And God answered prayer and the English yoke was cast off. But as we as a nation began to prosper, pride entered. And God was pushed into the background. God was pushed aside. His presence was no longer our priority. Churches have pushed, pushed the Holy Spirit aside for better programs, better entertainment. Why do children of God no longer speak in tongues? Why are the sick healed? Why doesn't the power of God break through? Oh, most probably we have the wrong pastor. No. Son of God, we have the wrong priorities. That's the problem. Just listen to your prayers. It's just about yourself and your own needs. When was the last time you just wanted God's presence in your life and nothing else? When was the last time God and only God mattered to you? You see, the world is confused. South Africa is confused. It's time for us to turn around and, and make the presence of the Lord the highest priority. It's time that we make time for prayer. You know God is talking to you this morning. You know that God wants a deep relationship with you. Why do you flee from His presence like Jonah? Do not flee. Life without God is like a desert. You will not survive. But how do I return? How do I experience God's presence again? It's easy. Schedule time with God. Quiet time. Plan it. Return to God as your only source. Do not miss the fellowship of the saints. Hunger and thirst constantly for God. Quench your thirst for God by spending time in His Word. Learn to be intimate with the Holy Spirit. Pray like Moses and David. Lord, do not remove your presence from us. Shall we pray? Father God, we come in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, that we can come boldly into your presence. This morning, 